sell this shit crazy. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to The Realest Show Out. Today we have another special guest who's no stranger to the show. If you'd like to introduce yourself for those who don't know. My name is Ryan Pazram and my uh, rap name of Ryan P. Thank you for joining us, Ryan. It's a great privilege to have you on and especially with your interview being so insightful. Thank so you. much positive insights and so much we could take from it. Wanted to elaborate on it again and touch on the first question. Especially as being a person who's not involved in crime, who's not been involved in a gang, do you feel that young people have a choice in being in a gang? They do have a choice because uh, some people might be asked the question, would you like to be in a gang? But they still have the choice of saying yes or they still have the choice of saying no. So they do have a choice of being in a gang or not being in a gang. Do you feel that environment has a factor to play? Maybe where the person lives... Well, I mean, I said in the first... In terms of making them join a gang, if they live on a council estate, for example, are they more likely they, to join a gang than someone who doesn't live on a council estate? Yeah, that's true. I mean, living on a council estate is uh, more easier to be in a gang, but even living on a council estate, you can still have the option of being in a gang. You can still have the option of smoking weed or selling weed. I know a lot of people might like sell weed to make money, but if they, they, if they get like a, a proper job, then they can make money without committing a crime or without doing something uh, like a criminal offence. So if they, they they have the if they have a like a proper job to make money, then they haven't got to worry about or um are selling weed to make money. So they can get a proper job to make money, and then they haven't got to worry about um, selling weed to make make money. So if you get a proper job, that's the best way of making money, basically. So. And you made a great point, you know, get a job. What about if you're a young person who has, has got a criminal record, who's not able to get a job, or every time you try to get a job, well, you get turned down because of your criminal record? Well, obviously, um, people that go to prison and they come out of prison, they they, they might look at themselves, they might think to themselves, um, oh, I've committed a crime, I went to prison. But when they come out, they might think to themselves, I want to do something to better myself and better my life without cr committing a crime or going to prison. When they come out of prison, that then they might think to themselves, I don't want to go back to prison again. Um, when they come out, they might think to themselves, do something to better themselves more, like getting a job when they come out of prison so they don't have to go back to prison again. So to try and get a job or like a proper job or something. And what are some of the ways you can stay positive? What advice, tips do you have for young people in terms of being able to develop a positive mindset? Well, you got you got a... Uh, Obviously, you got a... In your personal experiences, using some of your in, own life experiences. In, interactions is a, is a very good, um, positive thing. Interactions with with fam... Like, a pos positive positive interactions with family and friends. Uh, that's a that's a good uh, positive... Having a support network. Yeah. A, a positive support network, yeah. Interactions. And how, how important... In, in, by interactions, but with positive people that will help you persevere in your life, help you better bright, bright, brighten up your future. Yeah, in not not just family, mainly families, but friends as well. So those mm. two, they're they're the main two interactions: family and friends. And so, would would you say that having a positive support network has been important for you? In my personal life, yes, it has, it has, because my my family's been there for me from day one. Um, obviously, I didn't really mention the first interview, but I have got a bit of mental health. But even my family you know that I haven't. Even though I've got mental health, they haven't looked at me differently. They haven't treated me differently. They haven't looked down on me like, because I've got mental health. They're still treating me like I'm a, I'm a normal person. They obviously, I'm on medication and things like that. They know all these things already. Um, but at the same time, they still treat me like I'm, I'm a normal person. They don't look at look down on me or, or treat me differently because I've got mental health. They still help me. They still inspire me to do things. And they've, they've always been there for me from day one, basically. So... That's very fortunate for you. For many others, that's not the case. We live in a society that's full of stereotypes, judgments, and which brings me on to my next question. Do you feel that having mental health comes with a stigma, comes with a stereotype, and is it negative? Um, well, people with mental health, they can look at it in a more negative way. But if you, have mental health, if you look at it in a more positive way, then that might help your mental health condition because um, a lot of people 
um, obviously, if you look at men having a more negative way, then that that's when you might get looked down on a bit more. But if you look at men to have in a more positive way, then that's when that's when treat, people might treat you a little bit better. And then people might, even like if you have mental health and you are still positive about it, a lot of people might not think you have mental health. They might not think you've got mental health at all. If you if you're positive about it, people might and you're normal in the community, then people people um might not know you wouldn't, wouldn't even think you've got mental health even when you have got mental because health. you're so confident in yourself and the way you carry yourself yeah. and your mindset which is really important yeah yeah like walking down, even when, like walking down the street you wouldn't like if you look at men have it more positive then a lot of people will, will treat you normally because they, they wouldn't know you had mental health you look at them more positive way so. but how do you do that you know for people that are watching and listening who don't have the skill set that you have or have the ability developed in terms of to be able to look at things in a positive perspective although it's actually in essence negative what advice and tips do you have for young people struggling with mental health as i said look at it in a more more positive way um obviously some a lot of people may have the they find it hard to look at it in a more positive way um but obviously they might need support more support to do things um but if they they ask for more positive support for the positive things like going out the community a bit more often, do more things to help you mm. move forward in your life to persevere, uh, going out and more doing more in the community. Uh, you you made a great point. You saying about speaking, being vocal. I feel that a lot of people, especially young people, find it difficult to communicate, to share, speak about how they feel. How did you manage to develop your? ability to be able to communicate and share your views how how do you do that well um well just uh obviously i've had mental health for a number of years now so i've learned over the years how have you coped over all these years well i mean it started i mean <laughs> well um as i said i've had mental health like, like since I'm like 17 years old now um so obviously over the years i have learned about how to look at mental health in a more positive way over the years and and my my family has been very supportive of me to help me with my mental health. Obviously, a lot of people with mental health they're very unfortunate not to have a family to support them with their mental health conditions. Um, but so I've been very fortunate and very blessed to have a family that helped me support me with my mental health. And even when I first had mental health, I was very fortunate um, to to have my family to support me when I when I first. I was very fortunate, but. As I said, um, even people with mental health, they, try, they should try and look at it in a more positive way um, than a negative, and then that might help them to feel better, might help them with their mental health conditions as well. So that's another thing. So, Yeah, and you've touched on a really, really another great point, talking about having a support network, which we spoke about. But for those young people who don't have family, say, for example, yeah, a support but, network, what do you do then? Well, a lot of little people with mental health, they live in support and accommodation. The staff on the on the premises twenty four seven, so if they've got any um con, uh, worries, conditions, or anxiety or anything like that, they can speak to the staff on on in the support accommodation to help them, wherever it is, whether it's like taking medication, going out in the community more often, doing more things, um to help you move forward in your life, wherever you move back, the staff that uh, the um if you live in support accommodation. And you got any problems? Speak to the staff, mm. and then they'll they'll be to help you and advise you with things. That and that's that's what that's the staff's job. That's what they're paid to do. Again, being vocal, isn't it? Speaking, communicating. You have to, yeah, yeah. That then that's how that's you, you any con, any worries or concerns you've got to speak to the staff there, and then they'll support you and advise you what to do to help you. Which brings me on to my next question. Do you feel that there's enough support services for young people with mental health, especially when you was young, younger, other than your family supporting you, coming up, growing up? Do you feel that there was enough support services available? Do you feel that the government's doing enough well, to support uh, to young be, people with mental well, health? Well, to be honest, over the years, I mean, more recently, because um, of the funding, um, people with mental health conditions, uh, they, might, they might not have enough support as before because of like funding the cuts, that, the cuts funding that the government's from, made yeah the cuts that the government made basically crucial so. services that support young people yeah so it's 
mainly about the funding, even like the mental health dropping centers, because of the funding, they've gone downhill a bit. The dropping centers, how they, not how they used to be before, or how they used to be before, and how they are now, they've changed a lot. But do you uh, think it's because of funding? Do you really believe that? all of the services that have been put in place that are no longer in place to support young people are not invo- not there, no longer there because of funding? Do you really believe it's because of funding? Or is it because the government don't care about young people and their mental health? Um, well, I, I, it could be a bit of both, you could say. But I mean, I think it is more... Because f- even me, like, I, I used to go to dropping centres years ago. And the dropping centres I used to go to, uh, used to go to they've, a lot of them are closed down. So that's why I feel it's more about the. I'm, I wouldn't say the government don't really care, but I think it could be could be a bit of both. Could be about the funding, and it could be that the government don't care as well. Could be a bit of both. And to a be bit of both. You. It, could, it could be a, it could be a bit of mixture of the two. Yeah, you could you could say a mixture of the two. It could be. Last time on the show, we spoke about music and how important music was to you, and how influential and how impactful it was. How important has music been in terms of supporting you throughout your journey? My, my my rap music has been my um, biggest inspiration in my life. Um, I mean, I've been rapping since like 15, as I said in the first uh, interview, I've been rapping since like 15 years old, nearly 23 years now. Um, and that has helped, through, through my rap music, that has helped me come such a long way. Um, it, to, to, yeah, it's helped me to come a long way. Um, and uh, that's why, I, but yeah, it's helped me to come a long way with my, with my, with my rap music, so... Do you feel that if music wasn't there that you would have got as far as you have or been able to cope and support as much as you have been able to if music wasn't around? Um, well, I would have I would have tried to... I mean, I did do a chef course at college years ago. And that was like 2006 to 2008, a two-year course. Um, so at that time, I, uh, I, did, I did do a chef course, but I was, even then I was rapping on the side. Um, so I feel, I, feel, I feel that if... I wasn't a rapper then because I did that chef course then I could have at the time could have been a chef but and then but I chose that the best thing for me was to become a rapper um and that's what I wanted to do from a very young age as well to become a to become a rapper and to bring out like fresh new music inspirational music positive music nothing negative for second as I said in the first interview as well which is missing in our, in our in our society in terms of how much negativity is promoted through mainstream media it's very important to make sure your your message is positive it's relatable it's not negative because there's so much access it's just, there's so much easy access to negative music so I feel that's very important which brings me on to my last question finally in terms of young people ending up in prison, young people being killed, young people wasting opportunities, not having a choice, not having an option. What are the, what are the, some of the things you would like to see change within our communities or what needs to change in well, our communities, in your well, opinion? Well, young people going to prison, um, when, when they come out, do something that they enjoy more and do something that will help them more to enjoy their lives more. Um, so I, I, even... A few of my friends that I've known have the, that I've been to prison. They came out and they've and they've done something much better to better themselves, to help them move forward in their lives, basically. Um, but I, I, the advice I've got for young people: if you're if you come out of prison, just do something positive that will help you, and not not committing crime again to go back to prison. So just basically do, try and try and find a job, do something that will help you, help you to persevere in your life, basically. Something you're passionate about. A wise man once said to me, if you want something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. And I believe in doing something you've never done, you create new options, new choices. And it's very important to be able to see things in a positive perspective, to develop your mindset, to be able to look at the good in every situation, especially for you to be able to move forward, to be able to excel, to grow. You need to be able to adapt a positive mindset, even when things seem negative. Thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for coming on the show. Do Thank not forget so to like, subscribe. Until next time, thank you for joining us.